Venus and Company, how can I help you? Hello, there is something I would like to ask you. Sure, that's what I'm here for. Oh, I'm Mrs. Thumb, and I really love shopping online on your site. But, how do I know how many things I have purchased? All of the products that you purchase are in your shopping basket. You can view your basket at any time by clicking on it. Fine. When you are ready to buy, you proceed to the checkout. Is it safe to use my credit card? Sure. When you decide to place an order, you sign in using a secure server. Okay. Are there any special offers? At the top of the home page, there is an icon, Deals of the Week. Click on it, and you can view all our hot deals. Okay. I've got a query about one of your products. A pink top, size 24, code number 203. Pink top, size 24. Let me check availability. I am sorry, but this item is not available. Oh, what a pity. Well... Is the red mini skirt code number 311 available? Still size 24. Sure. Still size 24. Not available either. But at our warehouse, we have a wide variety of blouses and trousers on offer. Interesting. Okay. So, let me take a note of that. Blouses, trousers, and a pink top. Uh, no, the pink top is not available, Mrs. Thumb. Oh, yes, sure. Blouses, trousers, and red skirt. Oh, my husband is going to uh, love it. No, 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 you no. You are very helpful. Thank you so much. Good morning. <sighs> That's what I'm here for. Hi everybody. I'm sure that many of you are going to love this business session. We're going to talk about online shopping. Isn't it great? I love shopping online. Do you? In our scene, Mrs. Thumb visited a website that sells garments and calls the helpline for some additional information. Together with you, I would like to review the basic steps of an online shopping experience. Once you get to a website, you start browsing the products on sale. Browsing means to have a look at products. When you find a suitable item, that is, an individual article, you click on it to get more information. If you like the item, you add it to your online shopping basket. As Lucy says, you can view your shopping basket at any time which means that you click on it to see all the products that you have selected. If you change your mind, you can remove an item. When you are ready to buy, you proceed to the checkout. The checkout is the place where you pay for the goods. To make a purchase, you have to register your personal details and a credit card number. Do you remember what Mrs. Thumb is worried about? She wants to know if it is safe to use her credit card. Lucy says that there is no risk because the website has a secure server. A secure server guarantees that others cannot intercept your ordering information. Mrs. Thumb is interested in special offers or hot deals. That means items that are sold at a reduced price. She is calling because she has got a query about one of their products. A query is a question, something you want to know about. Do you remember what the product is? Is it a skirt? A dress? Right, it's a top. A pink top, size 24. Well, in England, a size 24, a 22 in the U.S., is quite a big one. Lucy has to check availability, and unfortunately, the item is not available, which means that it cannot be obtained. Time to relax now. Our session is over. Bye for now, and see you soon. Interesting speech, wasn't it?
Um, sure. While we are on the subject, I think the strategies proposed by Miranda are going to prove very effective. The report on our financial situation was very interesting, don't you think? Hmm, right. Speaking of interesting things, did you see your photo in yesterday's newspaper? You are kidding. What photo are you talking about? The photograph of you, jogging in the park. I can't believe it. Wait. I must have it here somewhere. Here it is. Good heavens! It's really me. What did I tell you? I look terrible in that old tracksuit, not to mention my sweaty red face. You always look great, you know. I'm not so sure about that. That reminds me of when I joined the triathlon club at the Serpentine. The triathlon club? Wow. What was it like? I must confess, I was not a great athlete. I see. It was then that I met my first girlfriend. Her name was Jackie. And she was so sweet. I met her before a competition. Hi. Are you ready for a new business workout? I hope so. Today, we're going to talk about holding a conversation. You are going to learn how to start a conversation, change the subject, show interest, and express surprise. Al and Linda are talking after a meeting. Al wants to start a conversation with Linda, and he says, interesting speech, wasn't it? You can also say, interesting subject, wasn't it? Or, interesting proposal, wasn't it? And so on. Do you think that Al is good at keeping the conversation going? I think so. In fact, he skillfully changes the subject when he realizes that Linda is not interested in talking about the meeting. There are many useful sentences to change the subject in a conversation. Speaking of interesting things, while we are on the subject, or that reminds me of when I joined the triathlon club, for example. When someone is speaking, it is important to show interest. Here are some useful expressions. Um, sure. Hmm, right. I see. What was it like? That means, how was it? Can you tell me more about it? Can you remember what Al saw in the newspaper? Yes, a photo of Linda jogging in the park. When Linda sees the photo, she is very surprised. In this and in other situations, there are a number of expressions and exclamations that you can use. You are kidding. That means, I am really surprised. I can't believe it. Good heavens! Used to show how surprised or how shocked you are. That's strange. Or, oh my. My, oh my, our time is over. I hope you learned some useful expressions and exclamations today. Bye, and see you for another workout. This way, Mrs. Knight. Ready for a regenerating beauty treatment? Yes, I'm coming. Is something wrong? No. Yes, there's something very wrong. May I ask what the problem is? First, the towel you gave me is rough. The one you gave me last time was much softer. I am sorry to hear that. Plus, these bath slippers are very uncomfortable. I see. Lastly, this bathrobe is too small. You see? Is that all? No, it's not all. Every time I come here, I have to wait for ages. Mrs. Knight, if you want to avoid waiting, you'd simply have to make an appointment. You have our telephone number, don't you? Yes, I do. Instead of a pair of flip-flops that are not suited to your feet, ask for standard bath slippers. With a small additional payment, you can get cotton or linen towels that are much softer than these. Okay. And as for the bathrobe, you just have to tell us what your real size is. 
I've changed my mind. The bathroom fits perfectly. Hi, everybody. Ready for a new health and body care session? Would you like to try an overall beauty treatment? Exactly like our faces, our bodies need care and treatment. Today, we are going to see some terms related to bathroom textiles and related accessories. Textiles is a general term that we use to describe any product that is made from a fabric or cloth. Mrs. Knight is not happy and Chloe needs a lot of patience to deal with her. Do you remember what the first thing is Mrs. Knight complains about? The towel, right. A towel is a piece of absorbent cloth you use when you are wet. There are many types of towels, including a beach towel, which you use for lying on in the sun. A bath towel, which you use after a shower. And a hand towel, which you use for drying your hands. Mrs. Knight says that her bath slippers are very uncomfortable. Bath slippers are shoes that you use in the bathroom and in similar places. Many people wear flip-flops during the summer. Flip-flops are a type of open shoe with a V-shaped strap, often made of rubber. As Chloe points out, Mrs. Knight chose a pair of flip-flops that are not suited to her feet. The lady complains because she always has to wait for ages. Chloe says that if she wants to avoid waiting, she should make an appointment. With a small additional payment, that is, a small sum, Mrs. Knight can have cotton and linen towels. Bathroom textiles can be made of different materials, including cotton, silk, linen, and synthetic fibers. What is the problem with her bathrobe? Right, it's too small. A bathrobe is a garment, like a coat, that you usually wear before and after a bath. The bathrobe is too small because Mrs. Knight did not give her real size. For example, you say, What size are you? Or, What size do you have or do you wear? I wear, or I have, a size 38. Anyway, our time is over. I hope you enjoyed this session. Bye for now. What seems to be the problem, John? Er, uh, I don't know how to say it. Do you like shopping? Shopping? Not much. I prefer staying at home watching TV. Lucky you. My problem is that I'm obsessed with shopping. I see. Whenever I feel alone or depressed, I go out and I cannot resist the urge to purchase something. Okay. My wardrobe is full of clothes I never wear. Some of them still have the price tag attached. <laughs> Maybe we could exchange wardrobes. My friends say I'm crazy. Maybe they're right. My credit card is up to the limit. What can I do, Dr. Fraser? Ray? We can work this problem out. I hope so. There are many kinds of addictive behaviors. You could be defined as a shopaholic. A shopaholic? Yes. A shopaholic is one who suffers from compulsive shopping addiction. I understand. Let me give you a few suggestions. Okay. First, pay your purchases in cash. 
and leave your credit cards at home. I understand. And when you go out, make a shopping list and buy only what is on the list. Okay. And avoid discount warehouses. Ha! Huh. Finally, when you feel the urge to buy something, do some physical exercise instead. Right. This is going to be hard at first, but I am certain that you'll feel better in no time. Oh, Ray, thank you so much. Hi, good to see you. Are you okay? I hope so. In this health and body care session, we're going to talk about different kinds of addictive behavior and how to deal with them. You will also learn some terms and verbs related to shopping. So let's get started. Do you know the word shopaholic? A shopaholic is someone who is addicted to shopping. This is Mr. Little's problem and why he's asking Dr. Frazier for help. Whenever Mr. Little feels alone or depressed, he cannot resist the urge to buy something. The urge is a strong desire, especially one which is difficult to control. This is an example of addictive behavior. We talk about addiction when there is a physical or psychological dependence, such as drug addiction. As we said, Mr. Little suffers from compulsive shopping addiction. I'm afraid I know a lot of people who suffer from the same addiction. Mr. Little's wardrobe, a cupboard for storing clothes, is full of clothes he never wears, and some still have the price tag attached. The price tag is a piece of paper with the item's price. As a consequence, his credit card is up to the limit. This means that he spent more money than he has. He must feel really bad, don't you think so? Luckily, Ray gives him some suggestions. Can you remember the first one? Right. Pay for all your purchases in cash. Cash is money in the form of coins and notes. Then he says, leave your credit cards at home. That is, don't take your credit cards with you. Mr. Little has to make a shopping list and only buy what's on the list and avoid discount warehouses. Can you guess what a discount warehouse is? A small shop? I don't think so. Exactly. A discount warehouse is a large shop which sells goods at reduced prices. Hmm. A difficult place for a shopaholic to avoid. Finally, when Mr. Little feels the urge to buy something, he should do some physical exercise, like jogging or cycling. I have to go now. I feel the urge to buy something, but I will do some jogging instead, right? Want to come with me? We'll keep practicing. Have we got any red purses? No, we haven't. Black hats? Yes, two black hats. Okay. Black high-heeled shoes? Black high-heeled shoes. Sarah? Um, yes. Yes, what? How many pairs have we got? One pair, size nine. Right. We need smaller sizes. What about scarves? White scarves. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, madam. Can I help you? Oh, no, thank you, dear. I'm just looking for now. All right. Well, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. We do have things which are not on display, so if you can't find what you're looking for, then... Thank you. Heavens, what was that? One white scarf. Excuse me one moment. 
What do you think you're doing? I'm fine, thank you for asking. What? We haven't got any more hangers. The dresses were all in a pile on top of the empty boxes, and I couldn't find the white scarves. <laughs> are you crazy? Where do you think you are? At the market? Did you realize that this is a classy shop? I'm with a customer. This just isn't acceptable. Sorry, one moment. Now, go back and clean up the mess and put these dresses back in order. But we haven't got any more hangers to hang the dresses on. That's why. Yes, we have. They're in the box on the floor. Listen, Lucy, I only work here part-time, and every time I come back to work is more difficult. After a few days, everything is in a different place. He moves things around all the time. Boxes are heavier and heavier. It's not my fault if the stockroom is a mess and I can't find anything. <sighs> but I... And another thing. I don't appreciate you treating me like this, especially not in front of a customer. I don't like it. If there's someone around here who should learn how to behave, it isn't me, it's you. Could you kindly call your colleague back? I'd like to try on this pair of shoes, but I need a bigger size. Sarah, you have a customer. Hi. Ready for a training session? Great. Let's get started. First, we'll go over some useful phrases to use in a shop, whether you're a shop assistant like Lucy or a customer. Then, we can go over some items of clothing and other things we find in clothes shops. So, let's say you're a shop assistant and a customer walks in. You can greet them and say, can I help you? Often people just want to look around first and see if anything interests them. In that case, they say, I'm just looking, thanks. Then you can reply, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask, so that they feel free to ask you for help if they need it because sometimes there are things that aren't on display in the shop, but they could be in the stock room. Now, before the customer walks into the shop, Lucy and Sarah are taking the inventory, and Sarah has trouble finding things in the stock room because she only works part-time. That means she isn't there every day, and Lucy who works full-time, moves things around, so they're always in a different place. Can you remember some items of clothing and accessories they mention as they take the inventory? Purse, where ladies keep their money. Hat. Scarf. One scarf, but two scarves. What else? Oh, yes. High-heeled shoes. There are women's shoes that have a high heel, often just called high heels. Do you wear high heels? I don't. When we talk about shoes, we say a pair of shoes. Clothes and shoes come in different sizes. What size are you? Or what size shoe do you wear? I wear a nine and a half or a ten in the U.S. Now Sarah has a little accident in the stock room because a pile of dresses falls on her. What does she need to put the dresses in order? Hangers. They're the things we use to hang clothes. Right. That's all we have got time for today. See you soon for our next training session. Bye. Good afternoon, Mrs. Knight. How can I help you? Yes. I want to return this pair of trousers. What's the matter with them? 
Well, the zip is broken. Uh, no, the size is wrong. I see. I apologize for the inconvenience. When did you buy them? A couple of days ago. May I see the receipt? The receipt? Sure. Here you are. All right. Do you want to exchange them with another item, or would you prefer a credit note? I would prefer a refund, if possible. I'm sorry, but that's not possible. Well, then, let me think. Um, what if I exchange it for that pretty belt over there, the one with the shells? I'm afraid there is a price difference. You mean that belt is more expensive than these trousers? Exactly. You have to pay an extra 20 pounds. Oh, my. We do have a lot of nice tops on offer. Okay, let me see. Hmm. Maybe I can try this black top. Where is your changing room? It's over there. Hi, everybody. Good, I'm not late. I went shopping and there was a lot of traffic. By the way, today we are going to talk about shopping and how to deal with problems. We're going to learn how to greet a client and offer help, apologize, ask for information about a returned item, offer a solution. Lucy, the shop assistant, greets Mrs. Knight and offers help. Good afternoon. How can I help you? You can also say, can I help you? Or, can I be of assistance? Mrs. Knight says, I want to return these trousers. To return means to give something back. When a client returns an item, that is, an individual article, you have to ask what the problem is. What's the matter with it? Or, with them? Or, what's wrong with it? Do you remember what's wrong with the pair of trousers Mrs. Knight wants to return? I'll help you. First, she says that the zip is broken. And then, right that they are the wrong size. You must then say that you are sorry. I apologize for the inconvenience or I am very sorry. It is important to get some information about the returned item. When did you buy it? And may I see the receipt? The receipt is a document which proves that money was exchanged. Now let's see if you remember. Lucy asks Mrs. Knight if she would like to exchange the trousers with another item or receive a credit note. Yes, a credit note is a document which allows you to buy other goods of the same value as the item you returned. Mrs. Knight wants a refund. In other words, she wants her money back. But it's not possible. If you decide to exchange the item with something else, there may be a price difference. This means that the item you want is more or less expensive than the one you are returning. For instance, for the belt, Mrs. Knight has to pay an extra 20 pound. Oops! Time to go. I bought a nice sweater, and I want to try it on. Bye, and see you soon.